Hello, my name is Fred Yates and I'm a third year SPS student uh, currently studying at the University of York. Um, I'm joined here with Li Xu Toshin, who is joining us for the second uh, of our SPS seminar series to discuss witnessing and creating the witness. And so in your own words, what, what are you going to talk to uh, give your presentation on today? Okay, well today what I'm going to do is I'm going to be presenting from my uh, recently published book, Creating the Witness, Documenting Genocide on Film, Video and the Internet, which really engages with the relationship between exposure and action that explores how media function to produce witnessing publics, that is audiences who see something become, you know, feel obligated to what they've seen and feel they should act. And this is something that involves, you know, sort of a range of considerations, including the aesthetics used for the image, that which transforms distant suffering, say, into an international actionable crime, such as genocide or a human rights violation, and how it just sort of also cultivates emotion and moral obligation and so on. And these are often developed through rhetorical grids and frameworks that are built from a social and media landscape. And secondly, I do consider, again, the social practices around this media object, film, typically. So the production circumstances, the circulation, the exhibition, and how those help shape the image, locate audiences, speak directly to audiences, and then also the number of activities around exhibition platforms that help channel that, you know, that emotion into action. And I will be looking specifically today at the Armenian Genocide case, which is an early case of film activism or film-related activism by this organization Near East Relief, which partnered with Proto-Hollywood Studios at the time to make films, and even partnered with child star Jackie Coogan. So we have a very early case of celebrity activism. So in some ways we can look at this situation as something that's actually quite predictive of the sort of various intersections of NGOs and uh, and I was going to say cultural organizations or entertainment. Why, or why do you think this is particularly relevant to uh, the ge my generation, I suppose, the 20, 21 year old? What I really hope is that from the studies that I do, there is insight generated into the role of media and how we can better use media, how we can more practically use it, how we can more ethically use it for social movements and social change, which I think is a concern of all generations and many generations. And as I said, although I've, I'm looking at a very early case, I do like it because it shows how long this has been you know, taking place. And we can start moving forward and thinking also about contemporary media, which is, of course, vastly accelerated through the technologies, the speed, the reach, and the interactivity. But there are really serious questions about how YouTube, for example, figures into this, how Kickstarter, as I mentioned, and even memes, which have become an interesting sort of form of political meaning making and social meaning making. So I think these are things that people who will be coming to school, people of your generation, are all using. I think this has been happening. And so I hope that the work sort of lends itself to thinking about these things. So is, is there any difference between uh, the publishing media and user-generated content, which is becoming more, more prevalent? Uh, yes, I mean, there, there is in that, of course, the user-generated content is, I mean, definitely valuable in a lot of this work, but sometimes is perhaps less, I mean, less regulated, less concerned. It sort of can go viral very quickly. And in some cases, this can be a problem when we're dealing with issues of ethics and identifying people who are protesting because their lives can be put in danger in this way. So there's, you know, there's concerns now around the ethics of media that spreads and also media that spreads loses its context, you know, that we don't have as much information about the context and also can be refigured and changed and used perhaps sometimes to more disturbing practices. Although that said, I mean, publishing media, one can look back at the number of images that came through uh, following the Holocaust, following the liberation of the camps in World War II, and many of those were misidentified as well. And there's many cases of information not necessarily being uh, either appropriately attributed or given all the correct information attached to it. So there's that challenge everywhere, but it's definitely amplified 
At the same time, of course, user-generated content allows something very exciting, which is for, I've been talking about witnessing publics, which is people who feel obliged to act. They can also become witnessing publicists, which is they can help generate more information and help promote the goals of an organization or of a cause.